Hello everyone, and welcome to whatever the hell this is. Basically, I've got Kevin here, and um, Kevin Yar, for those that don't know him. Today we're going to be talking about some seasonal shows that we're watching, because uh, for the life of me, I cannot make videos anymore, I suck at them, so I thought I'd try making a podcast instead. Or something akin to a podcast. So, anyway... Kevin, I think I'll start by asking you a question. Oh my what god! What is already. your favorite show already. that you're watching this season? So we can just we're just gonna straight up yeah. jump in. Well, we'll just <laughs> jump in with that. I guess you introduced me. I didn't even say hi to anyone. But yeah. it's, it's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Fucking! I it forgot about that. Matter. Yeah, I forgot it that you do matter. that on podcast. You generally introduce the hosts. Anyway, yeah, this is just gonna be. Get random thoughts on shows that we're watching, I guess, because if you're not gonna make a video about them and you're watching them, we, what's the point, you know? <laughs> I mean, to enjoy them, but you know, it's fun to discuss shows. Yeah. So, favorite show of this season it has to be, well, it's between these three between um, Bogotachi no Remake, Aquatope, mm -hmm. and Higurashi Sotsu. Uh, I don't think it's Higurashi Sotsu. I don't think that's the top two. The top two is either Remake or Aquatope, and I still can't decide which one I like better, honestly. I'm leaning towards Aquatope, personally. Yeah. I feel like it's interesting, because I'm, 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 like, the same. It's very close between Bokutachi and Aquatope, but I'm leaning more, to, leaning more towards Remake, just because of the last episode was fucking amazing, in my opinion. But anyway, we'll talk about Aquatope to begin with, because I still like Aquatope a lot. And um, yeah, so I think uh, what got me sort of gripped to Aquatope from the beginning is just how you sort of have the setup, a very genuine setup where Kukuru and fuck, what's, Fuka. what's her name? Fuka. I literally, <laughs> Fuka, yeah. I, how could I forget that? I literally had it on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, so um, you have this very genuine connection between two people that are sort of in a very delicate um, part of their, very delicate part of their lives where it could either go really wrong or it could, they're sort of, it could go really wrong or it could go really well depending on what happens and they're sort of helping each other through that. You've got Fuka who sort of is in the um in the situation where her her dream has sort of failed of being an idol and she's trying to find herself in spite of that failure, which is something that you see a lot in anime, you know. Um but it, it, it's the it's the connection between the two characters of like Kukuru also having to work with work with um work with all the staff at Gamma Gamma Aquarium to sort of prevent it from closing. It's it's just, in my opinion, a very good, genuine show with a lot of, you know, good moments. What what do you think about Aquatope, Kevin? Yeah, in Aquatope at the start, like the first, like, I'm just going to say like two episodes. I didn't know, I, I like it could have been, because it's a PA work show, it could have went like, you know, the glass slip way where it was like, you know, just a slice of life, and then it turns out to be about nothing, to, for lack of better words. And it's mm. like, it's just, it doesn't have any, like, substantial character drama or, like, thematic value behind it. But then, yeah, yeah after it slowly revealed what it's about, which is, I yeah, it's about uh, these two girls basically trying to find their own way in life or identity. So, yeah, Fuka's basically trying to find her own... Uh, identity while Kukuru really wants to like pursue a passion in not letting this aquarium basically her home like uh, close down so she's just trying to har her hardest right now and yeah I think it's like over time because uh, Kukuru and Fuka live in basically two different worlds Fuka's from like the inner is a inner city girl uh, deal with idols yeah Tokyo so yeah. she yeah, yeah. yeah she's like got uh, this expectation of like oh this is how or n not this is how it should be but like she, she would be treated as like a really uh important person while you're mm. not you know when you're in the aquarium you're just like oh you yeah, go do this like dirty we don't care who you are because what's important is taking care of the animals and the environment you you're in but it's developed into this like i'm just gonna say it they're gay they should be gay. They are indeed. And yeah. it, it's great. 
because it's just deepening their relationship really it is it's because what's wonderful yeah, the feeling i get from it <laughs> is like a cross between uh nagino sukara and uh tamako market nagino sukara obviously like you know the aquarium and the seaside beach feeling while yeah the tamako market aspect is more like the sense of community surrounding the aquarium and all like everyone uh who inhabits it like all the friends kukuru's um uh, knows and then fuka is getting introduced with everyone yeah i was gonna say that the actual like rest of the cast is really good too like udon chan the one that runs the diner or her mum runs the diner she just works there like I really, I really like her character, and I, I do like the other characters that are in the show. Even a lot of them haven't had much screen time yet, but they're. It is really about the community of the aquarium and sort of them all working together towards this common, common goal, and it just it it's a really nice watch. So, I I do enjoy the community aspect of the show as well. Yeah, yeah. it's it's really an an a not an unknown show that people. Are really not watching except i just know a few people from uh that are watching it but like otherwise in the general anime community sense probably no one's watching it or doesn't know about it so i guess we we have to be the ones to to tell people to, to go watch it you know otherwise everyone's gonna yeah. be watching slime <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit weird that no one's watching it because obviously i i think in the past uh, the pa work shows like this have been quite popular in the season that they aired um, at least I think so. Anyway. Yeah, Charlotte was popular. Maybe I think it's like Charlotte and before was really popular, and then I think after I don't know what came after Charlotte. Can't exactly remember if it was Sakura Quest. Is it Sakura Quest? Wait, Glossip? that came after Charlotte. Yeah, after Charlotte, Glossop was before Charlotte. I know that, but after Charlotte is Sakura um, Quest. I think I I don't know the exact dates there. I just know that eventually a day I became the day I became a god came out and that was uh, <laughs> yeah I've, I just that blanked wasn't that. so good I, I blanked that from my memory that's yeah <laughs> yeah um the other thing that I really like about Aquatope is just which and that I like this about any anime that's set by the coast and in particular the fact that it's Okinawa and it's so tropical I feel like the backgrounds and the imagery of Aquatope is really is really cool, and how they sort of tie. There's sort of like this underlying. I don't really know if it's like magic. I, I don't really know what to call it. But you've got this kid that's running around the city eating fish heads, and something weird's going on with him. And only time will tell where that ties into it. And of course, in the first episode, Fuka sort of blanks out, and she's sort of in the aquarium world, in the underwater world. There's some. There's some weird element going on, and I, I do want I do wonder how far they'll take that, you know? But that will be interesting to see. Yeah, um, I think yeah, the only supernatural element right now that I can see is definitely the like yeah, the little redhead kid who's prob you know, who's probably yeah. like, you know, a guardian deity of that island. But more uh the scene that you talked about where Fuka visited the aquarium and then like she was transported into like the sea world is I think I don't think that was a supernatural per se. I think that's just more to like to convey a feeling of how like she was really captivated by the aquarium. The only re yeah, I guess that's that could act it could actually be that. The only reason why I was leaning more towards the supernatural thing is because when the uh, the doctor, you know, the 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 vet that works at the aquarium has her baby. There's also a similar scene when the baby's born, like he's playing with the deity with the, the guardian deity and in it's the same sort of setup being and it, it could just be that they're that, that it's expressing the what the aquarium has done for them what the aquarium has done for the vet it could it could genuinely just be that but um yeah regardless of what it is it's 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 a very good show and i feel like the people that the main complaint i've been hearing and by main complaint i mean from a certain someone is they they said that aquatope is boring and that nothing happens and I, I disagree with that completely because while it was um a little bit slow in the start, it it, it was the fit was it the fit the fifth episode with the the with the mum coming back and um finding Fuka and sort of um I'm gonna I guess you're trying to say like the overarching storyline of Fuka trying to find her identity that just like sort of reinforced the way that like 
h- how old traditions is, is like Fuka would always listen to I don't know uh, what her mother thinks is best for her because obviously her mother is worried and wants her daughter to come back to like where she lives yeah. in like the city while Fuka like wants to adventure out into this unknown place and do whatever she can until yeah yeah no it's got this really important message of like finding your independence as well like you know eventually you're gonna have to branch out from your parents and seeing Fuka take this take the stride to say no i'm gonna stay here i'm gonna find myself it's kind of empowering in a way and uh, yeah i i did like that aspect of the episode and i do think that episode was the best episode so far in my opinion Oh no, yeah, um, it is, it's an inspiring message because, yeah, if you don't, I, it's, I think it's fine to find it boring because, like, you know, any, any show can be boring to anyone else, but... Yeah, sure. It's just, like, I think anime opinions, like, on the surface level, if you just don't try to, like, understand the intent of a show, it's, like, I think I've heard, like, so many just anime opinions lying about that it's, like, it's so... <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say it now, it's so boring to see boring opinions about anime if you don't try to understand the intent or if you don't feel a certain way towards it. Like, if you can explain why you don't like it, it that's better to me than explaining that it's boring. Because it doesn't tell me anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah. At least make an effort, you know, <laughs> to explain yourself. But yeah, let's, let's move on to um, how about my favorite show of the season... Boku Tachi no Remake, which I have already spoke about, but that was just the first episode, and a lot has happened since then. Um, remake so... our life. I remember before before anything aired, we were like, um, this could be either really good, or I know it had the potential to be really good, or this could be like super bland and generic. Because like, and just from, she... yeah, just from like, looking at the PV and the poster was like, Hmm, one singular guy, multiple girls, they're kind they're attractive. It was like, mm. it is set in university, so I was like, it could go to places maybe, but we we'll, we'll, we shall see. And it, it is looking like it's going to go places because that latest episode had a genuine love triangle forming that actually felt real and felt like it wasn't just a couple babies, like <laughs> I don't know how I don't know how to say it, but they, they, it felt like the characters shared a genuine connection, and thus, um, you know, you actually felt for Nanako when she when she saw at the end of the episode when she saw that uh, thing. Don't Shinoaki. say don't say the thing when she saw something. She saw something. She, okay. Are we keeping the spoiler free? Yeah, keep okay. it spoiler okay. free. But anyone who's seen it should know what we're talking about. Okay, yeah. That moment at the end by the water fountain. Yeah, yeah. It was it was um I feel like most people will be able to guess what that was, but it, it doesn't matter. Uh yeah. You should watch Bokutachi because it's 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 fucking good. Alright, in my we, opinion. We just jumped in straight to like the best part. Hang on. I'm gonna explain. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go back a few It's like is a is a rom com anime. The genre. Yes. But the the twist yep. is is that the main character um, has lived a life to when he's like, I think like twenty eight, and then one he, yeah, yeah, and then one day he, uh, he wakes up and he's back to like when when he's eighteen, and then he has the chance yeah. to basically, uh, redo choices in his past, and so instead of going into like this corporate job, he goes into an art school that he always wanted. He was accepted, but he never took. So now he's going to that art school that yeah. he always wanted to be in, and in there. He meets like all these uh, talented people that he, they just have to make, uh, yeah, they, they make, it's a film, it's film school, kind of, yeah. Visual, it's visual arts. Oh yeah, visual But arts. it seems like they mostly do film stuff, so I guess it's pretty much a film school, yeah. Um. And not always film, because like, there's artists, there's voice actors, there's like, uh, uh script writers as well, so like, you don't have to always do directing anyway, but... It, yeah, the first couple episodes, or there's always like some like uh, edgy scenes, but I'm glad it was like not that very not that prominent. There, there's some that you know bother some people, and I mean obviously the show would be better if it didn't have any, but I, I it's it's fine for now. Like if it doesn't go yeah, up it's beyond tolerable this, levels. It's, it's fine. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm just remembering the beach. <laughs> the beach in episode four? That was, like, a bit unnecessary, honestly. I mean, all of the fan service is unnecessary that has been in it, but, you know, it's it's fine for the most part. But, um, yeah. So I think what makes Boku Tachi actually particularly interesting to me at this point in time is that Kyoya is actually a good protagonist. And I feel like a lot of the times in rom-coms, it's either a self-insert character or they're just generally very bland characters that are the main guy protagonist in a rom-com. Oh, yeah, and then Whereas the, the girls actually, don't like him. Uh, oh, the girls like the blind yeah. protagonist for no reason. Exactly, and that feels fake. <laughs> because why would they care about this just bland idiot that doesn't do much at all? But Kyoya actually wants his, um, you know, his friends to succeed in a very... And he really does... It really manifests in, in the show. You see with... Nanako uh, wanting to be uh, she she wants, she wants to be, a, to be singer. a singer but she's yeah but she's kind of put it on the back burner she doesn't really know how to how to do it she feels that she her experience or her ability isn't good enough to do it but Kyoya obviously realizes that that's not the case and she is actually genuinely a very good singer it, it's just it, it's it's good to see that Kyoya cares about his friends and yeah I, I do like that element of it, and um, yeah, yeah. Speaking yeah. about like comparing this to like other like general rom coms, it's like in a rom com, the main character would care about like oh, a girl's like getting really close to him. It's like oh, he's gonna be like really embarrassed because like oh no, it's you know a cute girl's next to you, and then you, you're gonna be nervous. No, th- this guy's like you know in his mind he's like 28, but he's back in his 18 year old body. So, I mean, he it's obviously a th- um what's it called like it present the the female the female and male relationship dynamic is there but he's not like a high school kid who like gets embarrassed when a girl like goes really close to him like because he knows what it is and he's like he's not afraid but his main goal is to is to um what's it called basically uh chase his dreams first and foremost rather than yeah uh, any like fi- uh, not finding a relationship but What's the? What, what am I? No, that is that is right. His, his main his main sort of goal though is to sort of not only uh, chase his dreams but get other people to where they need to be. Because I don't know if you've realized this, Kevin. You probably have. But the in the beginning, the first episode, he like talks about these free characters that he, not free characters, free people that are like he looks up to, and they're like really inspirational in his in his career goals in the creative field and those three characters i believe are at least one of them is shinoaki because obviously he sees he sees her doing the art it, no it's and i think it's, two, it's a, two of them it's nana as well because nanaka when in the in the most recent episode when she was singing yeah she he referred to her her as nana and i'm pretty sure that's a singer during when he was like in his original oh body. yeah yeah and I'm presuming the third one is is one of them. <laughs> is is a is a different character as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And yeah. No. It it is. I don't. I don't know where I was going with that. I just I, I point out that plot point there that they're also the 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 people that he's talking to are. Um. Yeah. I feel like what could be interesting because obviously the whole time travel element is there. Like, will there be some sort of drama about him? messing up their developments into being these you know people that he looks up to or will it just like how exactly is he going to change the future you know or the present and also is it gonna is it gonna let him live these whole 10 years up to when he's 28 again obviously we probably won't see all of that but what i mean is is it just gonna is it i wonder if he'll like wake up one day and be 28 again and it's all like and it, none of it matters. Or if, is he genuinely altering the timeline? That's what I'm curious no, no, yeah. about. Yeah, there's there's well. a few ways this could go. Like if if it becomes like a real, it could become like a real like, uh, for dramatic effect where like, yeah, one day he wakes up or like or something hap like there's like an impending doom, like a ticking time where, yeah, one day he's just gonna wake up in his twenty year twenty eight year old body again. But then obviously he's learned from the experiences of what he's done in his like i guess dream reality but 
Uh, yeah, we'll see because it's the 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 twist isn't very prominent. It's just him. Basically, the only twist it, the uh, the show is using the twist is he has just ten years of experience of working in a corporate office or working in an environment with other people, and it's just experience from from that and like how group, uh, how the work environment can just like be absolutely brutal. Like you can put your uh, passion into something. And then, like, corporate higher-ups can just, like, say, oh, yeah, we're canceling this, and then you just can get fired from your job for absolutely no reason. Like, some things out of your control. Yeah. And that that was what really hit me with the first episode, is it sort of highlights this reality in the real world that you... If you pursue anything creative, like, let's say you want to be... Well, anything, really. And if, like, if you want to be an artist, you could really work your ass off, and then it could just be... Ta- your you're you could get into a position that you really like and it can all just like crumble underneath you for like reasons that are completely out of your control i guess that's true for most things like most jobs and stuff but it's particularly true in the creative industry just because of how it all operates and it's very uh unstable to have a career in that so i did like that it highlighted that but um yeah who would you say is the the best girl in remake then at the moment, um, yeah, after that I'm episode, quite after after the most recent one, episode five, the most recent one is uh, Nanako for me. Yeah, Nanako. Yeah, it, uh, is oh, it's it Nanako? Nanako. I thought it was Nanako. It is not. Na- nah, it's Nanako. I'm on the Annie. List. Oh, okay, it's Nanako. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I don't think Shino Aki so, is a bad character, right? As well. Yeah. No, she isn't. She she's definitely uh she's definitely good as well. But I feel like they've they've just given Nanako more time to sort of show her how how her true self, and I'm sure they'll give more time to uh, Shinoaki, and I'll like her more. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's probably covers Bokutachi. Uh, Hang on, so... I, I got I got so- something else I can say. Um, All right, go ahead. Yeah, for this series, I think like the the feeling I get from it. Or like what it's trying to convey is like not not any specific character, but I think most of them is just like characters. Ch- you should chase, uh, or you should take the risk to chase after your dreams rather than regret it later on. And obviously that applies to like anything in real life. But I think now as like you get older, you start to realize that what what the weight of those words actually mean. That like if you don't take risks while you're younger, you'll like get stuck into like i don't know a cynical or pessimistic loop that you can't get out of so it's better to take a risk and fail rather than not take the risk and then regret it later on thinking oh i should have done this i should have done that yeah like he basically gets the golden ticket to go back and sort of remake his life literally so but obviously in reality we we don't have that opportunity sadly so it is it does kind of express the sense of you should take uh you exactly as you said you should take risks and particularly take them as you as you can and otherwise you will end up regretting things and then like you said you just sort of become you just sort of spiral into this position of uh just questioning everything you ever do and then you never sort of move anywhere so yeah, I I completely agree with that. Yeah, because that uh, I think that's a sad reality that a lot of people like fall into, right? They just stuck in a dead end job because obviously they have to eat and live some way, so they have to do a job that they're not happy with, and but they're just stuck in there for you know for the next like however many years, which to me that sounds like actually kind of scary to work a job that you don't like and you're just stuck there, not able to do anything. Oh, it's terrifying. Yeah. Because what consumes so much of your life and it's just, yeah, to be trapped doing something you don't like. I I think work is like two thirds of your life, isn't it? It might not be that much. I know it's a, I know it's a big portion of your life. yeah. Yeah. So you want to be doing something that you're passionate about, really. So yeah, if you, yeah, if you don't do something that you're passionate about or like you find fulfilling and you just want to do it because it's like the prestige of the job or because it's high paying like those aren't reasons like good reasons to do it 
even though you might have been fooled into thinking that they were like to get example in like um my my real life i guess when i was younger or like let's just say let's just do, do this with youtube right when i was younger when i when i started a youtube channel um obviously no one thought youtube was going to be a viable thing so you just did it for fun but then at a certain point like youtubers started to gain money and this became like you know a viable way uh to live to make videos but even at that point i always thought like making videos like oh what what's the point in that you know like that's not a real job like because this was like almost conditioned into me like oh a real job is like you know something like that is high prestige pays well and um it's needed in like every country but just because a job has those factors doesn't mean that uh in, if you don't enjoy it like is it worth your time it's like not really it's like you should obviously pursue a job that you like or is fully passionate about because even if you earn like half or even less than a half of these like pre other prestigious jobs it's like if you find your job like fully satisfying you actually like don't feel like it's a chore basically when yeah you work yeah absolutely um yeah so yeah and back to back to bokutachi it really does sort of um like i i remember there was this the moment in the first episode that sort of um highlights how scary it is to sort of take a leap and follow because that's the other that's the counter argument to what you're saying right you say yeah it, it's simple enough to say yeah follow your dreams but in reality, a lot of the popular dreams that people have are very hard to even get into. And in Bokutachi, in the first episode, when they're having their introductory lecture, the teacher says, um, or the professor, sorry, says that I think only three people last year graduated and went into jobs in the visual art field. And that they wanted. That, so that they wanted, yeah. And that sort of highlights how scary it really is sometimes to take the step to say right this is what i'm going to do with my life because if it fails you'll end up with no job <laughs> and then and then you start it can almost be worse but i feel like it is still imp i still feel that it's um above all that is that you it's kind of like the the saying you know either chase your dreams or die trying like it, it, it's worth it in the long run because you'll never truly be happy if you take the safe path so yeah yeah i mean you're um, not gonna die but it's yeah it's not that it does not it's not that like no uh, that i was just saying yeah. the say the saying you know i yeah <laughs> yeah obviously you're not gonna die trying to get your passion but um yeah anyway i think that's a good cue to move on to the last show Unless that, unless we end up talking about something else, but I mean, this has ended up being quite structured. But you know, it's it's good, it's good. So, uh, Fumetsu no Anata A or To Your Eternity, uh, not a show from this season, but it hasn't ended yet, so I think we can talk about it. What I've been most impressed about with To Your Eternity is how there hasn't been really been an arc where. I haven't ended up caring about the characters. The most recent arc is where I was most worried about that because uh, Tonari, Tonari, ha yeah, yes, Tonari, uh, Tonari, yeah, is um, she was a bit of a an ass in the beginning, like tricking Fushi and basically. Yeah, she was just... being really cheeky. Like she was like trolling him almost, yeah. like not caring about his feelings. Yeah. But then they hit you with that, with the episode with her backstory and about her father and how he was sort of, well, we don't know. I'm, I'm presuming it was hinting towards they was framed, right? Or that it, he wasn't actually a murderer. Am I, am I right? Yeah, yeah, he that? wasn't, or... he wasn't, uh, he wasn't actually a murderer. Yeah. So when you feel that backstory and you sort of understand Tonari even more and you, you find out, you go back and you sort of experience her growing up uh, on this island, this ruthless island. Yeah, you've got to imagine how uh, how hard that must have been for her. Um, yeah, because she's know, a kid. Up, like, she, she can't, she's, she can't she's be a kid, like, yeah. she can't care about your emotions because like, it's literally life and death for her. Yeah. 
And that, and it's just literally like you could be walking along the street one day and someone just knifes you in the back. Like that's the reality of the island. It's just a lawless land. But uh, also, they sort of also highlight that they've built almost a semi-community out of that, at least with Tonari's group. And yeah, but back to what I was saying, I just find it really impressive how To Your Eternity hasn't really had a bad arc. Would you would you agree with that? Would no, you yeah, say there's, no, there's been no bad arcs? Yeah, and um, I I I truly do find that impressive. And the the sort of the the highlights of the series, you know, March's arc and Gugu's arc. I really like Gugu's arc. The, yeah, as the well. end of Gugu's arc becomes really good. Gugu, I think, starts off a bit weird, being that you yeah. know, he loses his or he doesn't lose his face. His face just gets destroyed, and then he has to wear this helmet and this doctor puts beer in his belly <laughs> it's a bit it's a bit yeah. weird but at the end of the it's arc, a bit out there yeah starts makes uh the, the yeah the love uh the, the love story between gugu and the princess was uh yeah very bittersweet of what happened there and yeah like the the whole scene where they're where they find where she finds out for the first time that it was gugu who saved uh reen was that her name oh yeah it was reen it was reen i couldn't remember reen yeah uh when when he when she finds out for the first time and it 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 that felt really like that really hit because you had this entire build-up of that entire arc where it, it was sort of like hinted at that gugu was or she could she sort of had hints but she didn't she never really knew and then for it to all hit at once that was a very powerful and emotional moment. So, yeah, it it really does hit... Like, To Your Eternity really does hit hard when it hits hard. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you think um, the um the best arc still marches arc? Um... Yes. For, yeah, for me it's As still, of, yeah, for me it's still marches arc. Yeah. I've made a video about that. I don't need to talk about it extensively because... Yeah. March yeah, is uh you can... March is uh oh so sad March. <laughs> no, no like yeah, this. Yeah, March is just a bundle of joy and to have yeah, to have her life taken away from her at that age for reasons completely out of her control is just saddening to no end. <laughs> and and March is just such a great was such a great character and um yeah, she was she was great. And um yeah, like uh also I was a bit worried with how they would handle Fushi's sort of growth as a character, but you know that's been on track. And he he's because when it started, we, I didn't when it started when Fushi couldn't talk, and he he he's slowly progressively become more human, is what I'm trying to say. And I feel like it's sort of reached the point where Fushi is as important of a character as anyone else. Yeah, he's and... conscious for his own actions. I think, yeah, that started in Gugu's arc. Mm. Because then after after he learned through, like, staying with Gugu for, like, that, that many years, he finally learned what March was to him. You know, his first mother, basically. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of self-reflection into your eternity because obviously you have the nature of how he sort of reflects the people that he's met in his appearance. So there is a lot of um, self-reflection and sort of thinking about back into the past. And you get to... You never really you never really forget about any character because he can transform into them. And it's not just that. he You can feel the connection that he has with the characters through that he... The whole setup of them having to have had a bond with him while they were living and then to for them to have died uh, you know under those circumstances so it is it is a really good setup of the show and it's not disappointed me at all yeah it um, takes the um the the idea of legacy because i don't exactly remember what it's called but like there's a term for it where like uh, someone, people are humans actually die twice. The first is physical death, and then the second one is you die. The second time you die after you're already physically dead is yeah, when yeah. everyone's. When people forget you. Yeah, when yeah. no one remembers you anymore. I don't remember what exactly that term is, but that's what To Your Turn is trying to tackle because Fushi obviously won't forget anyone 
who has died because he gets to literally transform into them and live on and then they get to live on through through fushi so he literally he's literally carrying like their lives in his hand and continuing to remember them but it's, it's kind it's, of like poetic and yeah, yeah it's it's very nice it's at episode i think we finished 16 so like it's only like a couple episodes left and really this arc i'm just waiting to like from the opening you know We've been saying this. <laughs> it's just, uh, I, I, there's, they're on the beach, and then there's, uh, like a, uh, a scene with like, in during the opening where like a zombie, it looked like it looked like zombies or ghouls happen, and I'm just like, oh great, when's when's everyone gonna die and then turn into zombies? Uh, I think yeah. that's what it looks like it's gonna happen. So, uh, not really looking forward to that. But in terms of how it ends, uh, yeah, I don't, it's not gonna, be, it's obviously no way it's gonna be finished, but. We just see if it like it sh- it should leave in like an open endedness so it can get maybe a second season, but um, yeah, I think overall it, it, it would de- be... it would definitely do that. It would. I'm ninety percent sure that it's gonna end that way. Oh, very open. Is okay. there anything else you want to say about? Yeah, yeah we can uh, we can talk about these other shows that well, I, not as into detail because obviously we both haven't seen them. Well, the one show we have seen actually we try to watch, but I was like, it's not not for me. Was a uh, Sunny Boy. Now that's oh, yes. this is gonna be Sunny this is gonna Boy. be a hot take, so I'm gonna choose my words carefully here. <laughs> but um, we watched like the first two episodes of Sunny Boy, and it does have a unique and interesting direction. But I didn't get hooked mainly because, or well, not mainly because, there's like a lot of factors that played into this. One, I think the editing is really jarring and makes it so like it's really hard to follow unless you're giving it your full attention. But yes. to give to give it to my full attention, I need to have characters that I like or can you know get understand or root behind. But the thing is, Sonny Boy distinguish is, between each other, yeah, because <laughs> they, they they look quite similar. They're yeah. portraying it as like realistic <laughs> Japanese uh, high schoolers. So everyone yeah. wears the same uniform. They mostly all have black hair. And I'm like, I can't really distinguish between everyone. And there's already, already so many Japanese ca- uh, um, there's school, ma- school uh, students. So I can't really yeah. remember who is who. All I remember is just yeah. like, oh yeah, there's this bully guy who, who has a bat or something. There's like this main girl. And I don't really remember what happens really. Just because... I, I'm trying to look for a character that I like, and I just can't find one, you know? Yeah, and no. the final um, thing is, for me, it's like, there's no music, which makes it feel really strange during the episode. Like, the only music is, like, I think, like, at the ED, and, like, maybe some, like, parts. But, like, I think the majority is, like, no music. It feels, like, just, I don't know. Yeah, it, something the whole, feels off to watch it. Yeah, no music. it feels like an art house project that I don't particularly like. <laughs> so, yeah, um... No, Sony Boy's a weird one. I, I know a lot of people do like it, and I think a big reason why people like it is because it's sort of... I forget exactly what they said. I It's something along the lines of the the inner, like, turmoil of a high school... of a real high school student, of a real Japanese high school student. Because a, a lot of people say that anime characters aren't really very real at all, for the most part. And that's what I feel like a lot of people like Sonny Boy. I could be wrong here. I could be misremembering. But I feel like a lot of people like Sonny Boy because they're that whole portrayal of it being very real Japanese high schoolers. Yeah, I basically don't like it for the same reasons you do. It's um, very yeah, jarring. I'm, I'm and just strange. not engaged with it. I don't think like it's bad. Like it's way more. It's Sonny Boy is a show where I respect it in the fact that it's trying something new and different rather than sticking to the same formula so i can respect it in that way i'm just not engaged with it so don't take this opinion as gospel or whatever just uh if you want anything just just watch the first like two episodes yourself and see if you like it or not and if you do great just watch the show then but for me i i couldn't i just wasn't interested you know yeah um yeah and it was it it was just weird for me it was just weirdly cut together as well like I remember the one episode where everything started burning. They started going back in time and it wasn't very clear when that was happening. And that kid with the star on his face, he's pretty, what's up with him? You know, 
Yeah, Sunday Boy feels stuff. like a fever dream to me. I watched two episodes, which is like an hour, and I just, I can't really remember what happens in it anymore. Yeah, same. It's it's kind of like a a distant memory now. But you know, I can like you said, I can see why people enjoy it. So yeah, yeah. Let um, me finish in a few other shit. We're not ending this now. No, 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 no. I, I, all right. I, I mentioned, if, if you say so. <laughs> I, I mentioned this show at the start. It was one of the best of the season, and for for. Uh, for like the first like three weeks, it was the best of the season. Uh, Higurashi Sotsu. Uh, I can't spoil it because you haven't seen Sotsu. But how much have you seen of yep. um, Go? Higurashi Go. Ten episodes, I think. Ten episodes. Um, okay, so you've seen like off the majority. I think you're up to Satoko's arc in that. Yes. Or is it Mion's arc? Um, it's Mion's arc. It's Are Mion's you, arc. Did you finish that? Mion's arc. I think it's just. I think it's just finished. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, uh, is, was Keiichi trapped in the basement? Yes, that was okay, the so last you, episode. Yeah, I so you you finished it then. You finished that. Yeah, arc. yeah. So Higurashi um, Sotsu is so hard to talk about because I can't even tweet about it because it basically spoils uh, spoils Go because yeah the way it's structured is Higurashi Go, it was <laughs> they tricked us into thinking it was a remake of Higurashi so people could just start with it and then <laughs> Psych Episode Two happens is like ah oh, nah man 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 man, this is not a remake. It's a sequel to Higurashi and Higurashi no Nakakoro ni Kai. So you have to watch those two to get an understanding, a fundamental understanding of what Go, of why things are happening in Go. Because, okay, the appeal of Go is like, it's another mystery, but there's no horror element anymore. Because if you have the context of Higurashi, you know what causes people to go crazy, and you know who the main villain was in the original series. Yes. Now it's um. like, in Go, it's like, Okay, uh, the time loops are happening again, but not for the same reasons. Like, it's not the same villain, and things are happening in different ways this time. Slightly different ways. And Rika is just like, bitch, why? What happened? I'm... <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> and that's basically all of, um, that's all of Go, until, like, the very last arc, where, like, Something is revealed. I'm not even going to say what it is. It's just something is revealed in the Lost Ark. And then it's like, ah, you see what happens. And then they announce season two. Right? Yeah. Because it was like, there's no way it was going to end. So, yeah. Higurashi Sotsu, the, without spoiling it, is answering all of the um, mystery arcs from Go. Because then you get to see if your theories were correct from Go. And like, how everything played out. So, it's like, there's like some identical scenes, obviously. But like given different uh, perspectives. Oh, so I, I, I'll i just spoil the, the, the very first arc, which is like the Rena arc, right? Yeah. In Go, it, oh, sorry, in the original series, the first arc was Keiichi was the one who went crazy and then killed his friends. In Go, it was portrayed as Keiichi was about to go crazy again, but then because Rika has knowledge of the original series, she was like, Oh, let's Keiichi, maybe you should trust your friends this time. And so he does. He doesn't go crazy. But then it, it was it was wrong because his friends in this case Rena was the one who went crazy and then killed or not killed him but killed everyone else. So in that sense he was right. So like the twist is if you knew what the original s- series was, the twist is like, "Oh, you you weren't expecting that." But then it it basically played a double twist. Like a no it played a yeah, no yeah. you card. <laughs> Yeah. And then but in uh, in Sotsu it gives context of why Rena went crazy. It was uh because I don't think this is much spoilers because it's from the original series as well. Uh she was having a hard time in her home life because of her alcoholic father who is v- very in debt. And then she started getting paranoid about certain things because Keiichi like said like I can't believe if you remember there's this one line in the in the first arc of Go where Keiichi says, I can't believe Rena would kill someone like that. In that context, Ren, uh, Keiichi was just talking about, like, playing tag. Like, she was ruthless in playing a game. But to Rena, because she was getting more paranoid, she actually thought she, um, uh, that she killed someone. Like, she knew. Hmm. Yeah. And so that's why okay. he, he went a bit more, she went, like, more crazy. So it gives, like, that perspective. So it's actually, like, I see. really smart in that sense of like it's really tightly written like everything happened for a reason yeah no that's yeah that's pretty 
intense. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, you just have to. It's like you have to think about between three <laughs> different series of like the original Go, and it's giving a new perspective on all of them. But um, so yeah, Sotsu, I don't. It's like it's not doing. It's not advancing the main story yet because it's still answering the um the question arcs from Go. So honestly, I'm I'm thinking that. It won't even. There's gonna be like a third season because honestly, I don't see how it's gonna resolve the main conflict between certain characters in like five episodes. So I'm actually thinking it's just gonna answer all the answer arcs from Go, and then it's gonna finish, and then another season will be announced. That's what I'm thinking. Otherwise, I'm gonna be kind of disappointed if it tries to rush the ending within like five, six episodes. Because the main conflict is crazy. I I won't spoil it. I can't say it. I can't say. Yeah, what it no. Is, I, just I really need to get. I really need to get back on and finish Higarashi Go. Cause, uh, yeah. I mean, I I I'll probably do that today. Actually, why not? Um, but yeah. Is there any other shows you wanted to bring up? Or, <laughs> or no, there is I, one more show I could bring up, but it's like I'm gonna talk about that. And negatively, and I don't think I need people on me for that, which is just, <laughs> yeah, I I don't I don't I don't need it. It's fine. Can you, you are you gonna mention opinion. the Are you gonna mention the show's name or <laughs> uh, or will we just be left completely in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the it's the McDonald's anime. All right, the McDonald's anime. Yeah, it's the McDonald's anime. An anime that's basically has turned into McDonald's, where you know what you're expecting. I do see. You, do you still not know what it is? I don't know what it is. Oh no. my god! Okay, it's My Hero Academia. It's My Hero Academia. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, no, if it's the if, best if, not if talk about that one. <laughs> if I'm gonna say bullet points of just season five, I'm not even gonna say bullet points. Let me just compare it with Attack on Titan, right? Okay, best comparison I can make. All right, so. My Hero Academia season five. We're at like a hundred episodes, right? Okay. Attack on Titan is also like around a hundred episodes right now, season four. So in Attack on Titan, we've yeah we went from you know, fighting the Titans to surviving against people to season four, which is committing a uh, mass genocide. Right. That's a hundred episodes. That like that's that's actual progression of what's happening in the story, right? My Hero Academia. All right, we start, start with Deku getting powers from All Might. All right, season two, he's in he's in UA Academy. Season three, okay, he's still in UA Academy, but there's more interesting villains. Okay, fair enough. Season four, oh, there's another, you know, kind of good villain, but he's still in the UA Academy. Season five, why are we why are we doing a tournament arc again, guys? But with characters I don't care about. P- please tell me we're a hundred episodes in, and he's. Deku's still in his first year. What are we doing here? Like, uh, is this filler? Like, it felt like watching filler, honestly. Like, what am I doing here? Just tell me. Like, how long does it take for, like, a, something to happen in your story to progress? Like, I understand all the themes. You've been interested in, like, some great villains. But then you're not even progressing your story, so nothing, like, nothing's happening, essentially. Like, you can tell a story thematically, but then there's no actual climax or resolution because you're just not doing anything with these characters and obviously people are saying oh wait for the next arc it's the best arc of my academia i'm gonna watch it but i think um even if it is the best i think i'm just done because one if it's the best that means it's just gonna go downhill from here or the other option where it's okay it's not the best and then i'll just finish then because i've already watched the best arc which i think is season two so Either way, I'm, I think I'm I'm done after this season. That's the My Hero Academia yeah. ran over the McDonald's of anime. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm not watching it. But uh, yeah, I think that concludes this little talk because we've been going for 52 minutes, which Sur- is actually surprisingly, yeah. I, like midway through, I was like, "Holy crap, we we were like in 20 minutes already, and we're just talked about like one show." I'm like, I didn't expect <laughs> to do that. Yeah, no, that's it, honestly impressive. <laughs> I yeah, was I expecting this was going to be a bit of a flop. I thought this was going to be like 30 okay. minutes. <laughs> yeah. Or less. Uh, yeah. Um, 
But no, we had some good discussions about the shows we're watching, and uh, uh, I don't know what we're going to do next time, if there will be a next time. If there will be Hopefully a next time. Hopefully there will be. Well, just comment down below. If you enjoyed this, maybe there will be a next time, you know? It's, it's, it's a heavy factor. If you, if you like listening to this, then uh, maybe there will be a next time. We're not going to title this podcast anything, because we don't know. This might be a one-off. We'll see. Although, please do it, because I'm running out of ideas. But, uh, yeah... Anyway, so uh, if you want to check out Kevin, you can find him at Kevin Nyar on YouTube. You, it, There's no chance you don't know Kevin if you're watching this video. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought I'd just say that because it's pretty much obligatory. And yeah, do you have any final things to say, Kevin, before we turn off? <laughs> um, About the shows, not really, but... um. I think this is like I don't I don't even remember the last time I was on a podcast. I can't remember. It might have been like at least like three years ago since I recorded. I think the podcast. last time I think the last time I recorded a podcast was also with you. So. Oh, oh, I remember what it was. It was the unreleased episode of us with Gianni. That's what yes. it was. I don't even remember we what year about- that I think that was twenty nineteen, I think. I don't it remember. It was whatever year Domestic Girlfriend came out because it was twenty nineteen about Oh my yeah. god. And that was unreleased. Very sorry. That was a I... fuck. That was a good thing we did there. So yeah, why did hopefully you we can get Gianni on again. So sad. Why did you not release that? <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was a bit sad. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, that's uh, it from us. And uh, hopefully there'll be a next time. But bye for now. Goodbye, gamers. <laughs>